Hi, I'm Mark Abel, Associate Professor of Kinesiology at the University of Kentucky. I have experience in designing resistance training programs for a variety of populations. In addition, I've taught a number of academic courses in exercise program design. This video is an introduction to a series of educational exercise videos to enhance physical activity in individuals with varied ability levels. This resource is a product of Project CHEER, a Centers for Disease Control, Disability, and Health Branch funded initiative with partnerships at the Department of Behavioral Health Division for Developmental and Intellectual Disabilities, Kentucky Department for Public Health, and the Human Development Institute at the University of Kentucky. Our goal is to provide you with strategies and resources to meet the recommended physical activity guidelines and achieve the associated health benefits. The physical activity guidelines are for all of us, but it's important to remember to be active at your individual level and that every bit of movement counts. Everyone should engage in regular physical activity according to their ability levels and should avoid inactivity no matter what limitation or barrier you might have. Please consult your doctor about the amounts and types of physical activity that are appropriate for your abilities. And so now I'd like to briefly discuss the physical activity guidelines for all adults, starting with aerobic activity. Regarding aerobic activity, all adults should, should perform at least two and a half hours, that's about 150 minutes per week, of moderate intensity aerobic activity. Moderate intensity is anything that noticeably increases your heart rate. Examples of that would be brisk walking or wheeling yourself in a wheelchair. Um, another way to interpret this recommendation is to perform uh, 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity on five days per week. In addition, if you prefer vigorous intensity aerobic activity, the recommendation is to perform about 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity. Examples of this include jogging or playing wheelchair basketball. So you can achieve this recommendation by performing 20 to 25 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity on three or more days per week. And vigorous intensity is defined as anything that noticeably increases your heart rate and your breathing rate. It's important to note that you can uh, achieve these recommendations with a combination of moderate and vigorous intensity activity. So you might perform maybe three days of moderate intensity activity and one or two days of vigorous intensity activity. An additional point is that you should perform this moderate or vigorous intensity activity in 10 minutes or more. And now I'd like to briefly describe the recommendations for resistance training. Resistance training is defined as any activity of moderate and high intensity that engages um, major muscle groups in the body. And these muscle groups include the shoulders, chest, back, and legs. Now, the equipment used for some of these exercises might include typical fitness center equipment like dumbbells and kettlebells, but some of the equipment that we're going to use in the exercise videos include things you can find at home, which might include elastic tubing, soup cans, or milk jugs. There's a couple important points to note with regard to strength training. The first is progression. It's important that you start with the easiest exercise in a given video, and if you find that to be too easy, simply move on and perform the next most challenging exercise. The second point is breathing. We'll teach you how to breathe and when to inhale and exhale for each particular exercise. But if you ever forget, just remember to breathe. Um, next is listen to your body. With exercise, there's good types of pain and there's bad types of pain. Good pain includes a mild burn that you might experience during the exercise or some mild soreness after. But there's also bad types of pain, which might include sharp pains that you might experience. If you feel sharp pains, please stop performing the exercise at that time and consult with a healthcare professional. With regard to the soreness, you should expect some mild soreness for about one to two days after exercise. And this soreness is can often be alleviated with some light activity, performing stretching, or even some foam rolling to help alleviate that pain. For more information and to learn more about Project Cheer, go to wellness4ky.org.